Welcome back to another episode of Debunked, where we take all of those crazy rumors you find online and spend 20 minutes talking about the many, many ways they're wrong. There are a bunch of MCU theories floating around at the moment, and one of the most interesting ones has to do with our favorite trickster god, Loki. It's time for us to debunk the popular theory that Loki is dead for good in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and show you why it's definitely possible he'll not only be in Avengers Endgame, but have a role to play in the movie. With fanboys and girls holding their collective breaths for the release of Captain Marvel on March 8, 2019, and Avengers Endgame coming out almost two months later on April 26, 2019, not only is this shaping up to be an incredible year for Marvel movies, but it seems everybody has an opinion or theory on what's going to happen in the next Marvel movie. Seriously, if you just search Avengers Endgame theory on Google, you'll get so many different ridiculous theories with each one crazier than the next. The most insane theory we saw was one that claimed everyone who died in Thanos' snap at the end of Infinity War died for good. Yeah, as if that would happen. Anyway, this theory did get us thinking of the other heroes who died in Infinity War, which made us start bawling our eyes out once we remembered the god of mischief Loki, who was one of those we lost. Now, everybody who watched Avengers Infinity War saw the encounter between Loki and Thanos on the spaceship full of Asgardians. You remember that scene, right? We saw the members of the Black Order all together for the first time and Heimdall meet his maker. But it was Loki who stole the show. Loki pretends to offer his services to Thanos' crew as they prepare to visit Earth and round up the two Infinity Stones that are there. But in a move typical of the Norse god of trickery, Loki pulls out a dagger and straight up tries to prison shank Thanos. But of course, Thanos knows all about Loki and how he can't be trusted. So Thanos quickly protects himself with the Infinity Stone and grabs poor little Loki by his neck. You all know where this is going. Thanos appears to snap Loki's neck and to dump his corpse right in front of the bound, gagged, and one-eyed Thor, continuing the God of Thunder's absolutely horrendous week. Since we heard the snap of Loki's neck, all we could think of is his lifeless corpse plopped on the floor of the Asgardian spaceship. Since Loki didn't show up again in Infinity War, it's safe to assume that he's dead for good. Just like Spider-Man's Uncle Ben, right? Wrong! And it's this theory that Loki is 100% for sure dead in the MCU that's about to get debunked! Say my name! What better way to begin than by taking a good look at Loki's evolution from his first appearance all the way back in Journey into Mystery number 65 from October 1962 to now. Loki has come a long way since then, both in the comics and the MCU, all the way up to Avengers Endgame where we assure you, despite what you've seen, that Loki's very much alive. Here's a little background on our favorite Avengers frenemy, which is a portmanteau of the word friend and enemy. Yeah, we can get a bit fancy here at CBR, huh? Anyway, Loki has as comics, MCU fans, and even fans of Norse mythology would know, is an Asgardian prince, the god of mischief and usurper of the Asgardian throne. He really loves trying to take over that throne of Asgard and has made countless attempts at doing so in both the comics and the MCU. Adopted by the Norse Allfather Odin, Loki was born a frost giant, although his appearance was unusual for a frost giant, you know, not being blue and all. Baby Loki was hidden away until he was found and adopted by Odin, consequently being new to the family but not actually of Asgardian blood, Loki's entire lifetime has been permeated by a pretty severe case of sibling rivalry with one of Odin's other children. This makes perfect sense, as Odin's other son is better known to just about everyone as the golden-locked, handsome, and incredibly strong Thor the God of Thunder. To be fair, young Loki was always treated as a true prince of Asgard and was never informed of his true Jotunheim heritage throughout his youth. However, in the back of his mind, Odin made sure Loki would never actually claim the throne of Asgard because of his frost giant blood. Compared to other Asgardians, Loki is smaller, less muscular, has a darker hair color, and even has a lighter complexion. Knowing he would never match Thor's strength and physical abilities, Loki spent a lot of his youth trying to prove himself as Thor's equal by studying the magical arts instead of training as a warrior. He became quite good at it too. Recognized as the god of mischief, his many appearances in the MCU movies have proven that you never really know what's what with Loki. Can you trust what he says? 
Can you trust what he does? No, you definitely can't. Loki is always looking out for himself. You really can't and shouldn't ever believe anything he says or side with him at any point in time. It's just never worked in the comics or the MCU, and it never will work. He's the god of trickery for a reason, and just about every time you think you know what to expect from Loki, oh, how the turntables. Everything Loki does is just a means to an end. He doesn't care how many people he has to hurt or manipulate to get what he wants. Loki sounds a lot like Thanos to us in that regard. Speaking of Thanos, some MCU fans are certain that Loki was killed for good in Infinity War when the big purple maniac Thanos snapped his neck and tossed him on the floor like a peanut shell at the ballpark. And believe it or not, this theory is supported by Loki himself. Actor Tom Hiddleston admitted in an appearance at Comic-Con Seattle that he knew Loki's death was coming. Hiddleston said, So I've known about that scene for two years. I met with Marvel in May 2016 and they were actually telling me the story of Ragnarok with concept art and images. The Russos came in and I introduced myself. So all four of us sat down and they said this is how Infinity War begins. My whole journey through making Thor Ragnarok, I knew this was coming. By the end of Thor Ragnarok, Loki has been accepted as Thor's brother again. Emphasizing how Loki died to save Thor, which is one of the nicest things he's ever done, Hiddleston essentially told us that he felt there was power in how his character was killed shortly after reclaiming his title as an Odin son. He said, When I came to shoot the scene in Infinity War, I think it's very powerful he calls himself an Odin son, and that closes the whole journey of Loki and what he can do. Loki's death set the stakes up emotionally. It takes the stakes up dramatically. You know that Thanos is someone who's more dangerous than anyone we've seen before. So what's interesting is that Tom Hiddleston's talking about Loki in the past tense, which would sure seem like confirmation that Loki's dead and a pretty substantial spoiler from a significant cast member, right? In addition, in just about every appearance Loki has made in the MCU, there's at least one scene in which he's flat on his back. We don't quite know what that is, but this is Marvel Studios we're talking about here. They love to use a lot of cinematic conventions to tell a story, so revisiting this imagery might be setting viewers up to expect Loki's ultimate death. Combined with what Tom Hiddleston had to say about his character, it sure sounds like Loki's journey in the MCU has come full circle. Or has it? I saw you die. I mourned you. I cried for you. I'm honored. We believe Loki's very much alive and will reappear in Avengers Endgame to, once again, spoil the day for the Avengers and complicate almost everything for Thor, as if things weren't complicated enough. Let's be real for a second. This isn't the first time we've seen Loki face what appears to be certain death. Remember in the first Thor movie, you know, the one called Thor, when Loki releases himself into space as Thor and Odin look on? Or how about in the second Thor movie, The Dark World, where Loki gets stabbed and dies again, but this time in Thor's arm? Well, if Loki has cheated to death twice, there's no reason why he couldn't go for a hat trick, especially if the hat is a big gold helmet with giant horns on it. After all, three's a charm. Seriously though, there's just plenty of precedent in the MCU that Loki fakes his own death, and, you know, avoiding a severe butt whooping by Thanos is a pretty good reason to play possum. No one wants to get those Infinity Gauntlet wielding hands. Nobody. Combine the fact that Loki's defeated death a couple times with the fact that these wonderful Avengers movies take place in a universe that's not unlike the Marvel Marvel comic universe and that everyone who has ever died has come back, er, except for Uncle Ben, but he's not a part of the MCU. Eh. Even though plenty of heroes have died in the MCU, including those lost from the finger snap of doom at the end of Infinity War, they've almost all come back at one point, and we expect anyone who was dusted to come back by the end of Endgame as well. But the point is, does anyone actually die in the MCU? Typically, if a character dies in a movie, it's a pretty sure bet that the character won't appear in the sequel, right? If you see him die, He's dead. Simple as that. He's not going to turn into a ghost and return, or anything like that. It just wouldn't make any sense. Now, we wasted no time checking the most reliable source of information ever created to ensure that Tom Hiddleston was, in fact, listed in the credits of Avengers Endgame. So, of course, we immediately went to IMDb, and his name is not listed there. So, that's it for Loki then, right? Well, there's photographic evidence of Hiddleston on set for Endgame in costume. This means his absence from IMDb is very likely a red hair designed to keep MCU fanboys and girls guessing as to whether Loki is in the movie or not. But it's pretty obvious he is. The thing is, it doesn't necessarily mean he's alive in the movie. It's possible that Loki's scene is a flashback, because it's common knowledge that Endgame is going to feature a lot of time travel involving the quantum realm and whatnot. That being said, his absence from IMDb is, in a word, conspicuous. Especially since some characters that were disintegrated by Thanos' finger snap of Doom are listed, like Groot and Bucky. It's also common knowledge 
knowledge that Marvel Studios will present a TV series starring Tom Hiddleston as Loki for Disney's upcoming streaming service. Details about the series are few and far between so far, but we think it's pretty reasonable to imagine that a series based on a dead character, who no longer adds anything to the MCU narrative, probably won't catch on, and will be cancelled faster than you think. Of course, it could be set before Infinity War and Endgame, but that wouldn't make much sense based on what we just said. We love Loki, and we hope this is going to be a great series, but we won't keep coming back week after week if the show is just a shot of Loki laying on his back motionless week after week. If that's the case, we'd rather watch him in a prequel to Infinity War any day, even if it doesn't add anything to the current MCU, because it's Loki. He's always entertaining. We said this before, but while Loki calls himself Odin's son, and is acknowledged for all intents and purposes as a Norse god, he's in fact genetically a frost giant. Frost giants, as you might remember from the first Thor movie, are, well, giant and also blue. While vaguely humanoid, it's fairly easy to tell the difference between a human and a frost giant, as well as a Norse god and a frost giant. They honestly couldn't look any different. We also know that Loki is using some of his mystical hocus pocus to present himself as humanoid, so he fits better in Asgard as well as on Earth. Earth, by the way, is a pretty diverse planet and overall fairly tolerant place. But if we started seeing blue frost giants roaming around, we'd definitely start asking questions sooner rather than later. So in the name of good publicity, Loki looks like Loki because that's what Loki wants to look like. He uses a spell to make himself look the way he does. Logically, if Loki dies, the spell is broken. And if the spell is broken, it stands to reason that Loki would revert back to his original blue frost giant appearance, rather than being the handsome corpse we saw lying on the floor of that Asgardian spaceship. Probably one of the most popular theories going around about Avengers Endgame and Loki's whereabouts is that in all his appearances in the MCU, Loki's portrayed as right-handed. He holds his weapon in his right hand, and he zaps his opponents with energy blasts or frost giant freezy powers with his right hand. There are only two times in the MCU that Loki's documented using his left hand. The first time is right before he faked his own death in the Dark World, and the second time is when he tried to shift Thanos right before the Mad Titan snapped his neck like a celery stalk. Is he using the same trick twice? Is Loki favoring his left hand a sign that the Loki we saw in these two scenarios is a fake Loki? An astral projection or a mirror universe Loki? Well, Loki does have a habit of duplicating himself here and there throughout the MCU and appearing where he isn't. So it's entirely possible that the Loki killed by Thanos wasn't actually Loki, but some form of left-handed phony. If you're ever confronted by Loki, toss him a baseball and see if he catches it with his right or his left hand. Then you'll know what's up. Another one of the craziest theories we've come across so far is a fan theory that Loki's still alive because he actually assumed the identity of Bruce Banner during Infinity War. Loki, so the theory goes, used his command of illusion to present himself as Bruce Banner. So after the opening scene where Hulk gets beat up by Thanos and Loki appears to get his neck snapped like a bunch of dry spaghetti, every time we see Banner on screen, it's actually Loki in disguise. Fans are using this theory to explain why Banner can't become the Hulk during the rest of Infinity War and why he knows so much about the Infinity Stones. While this definitely supports our theory that Loki isn't really dead, we're not quite sure that this is what happened in Infinity War. After all, we're supposed to be seeing Professor Hulk, who's equal parts Bruce Banner and equal parts Hulk in Endgame, so how could Loki transform to be half Hulk if he's just disguised as Bruce Banner? His illusion skills aren't that good. That's for sure. Valhalla and Hell. If the MCU sticks with the whole Norse mythology thing, which we're sure they will, the Norse afterlife beliefs isn't as cut and dry as the more familiar concepts of heaven and hell we have in modern religions. There's actually a few options when it comes to where the Norse faithful and their deities go after their time as a mortal is over. In the Dark World, Frigga's soul rose into the stars as twinkly glitter, exactly like Odin's did in Ragnarok when he died. It should be pointed out that when Thanos snapped Loki's neck, there was no twinkling, which one might expect from an heir to the Asgardian throne, even if Loki's really just a mutant frost giant. No twinkles, no death. It's as simple as that. We didn't see the twinkles when Heimdall died either, but Heimdall never sat on the Asgardian throne. Royals like Odin, Frigga, Thor, and Loki are supposed to twinkle when they die. If we lose a major character like them, we want to see some darn twinkles. Really, the only real Norse mythology afterlife concept that the writers explore and stick to in the MCU is Valhalla, the place where these souls of the greatest Norse warriors go after they die. Thor mentions it a bunch of times, and it's where every Norse warrior wants to be in the afterlife. In fact, Valhalla is such an important part of the Thor mythos that the producers even licensed the great Led Zeppelin song to be part 
part of the soundtrack for Ragnarok. Valhalla is defined as a majestic, enormous hall located in Asgard and ruled over by Odin. You'll also find the souls of other warriors and an endless feast. Sounds incredible. Well, you know, besides the fact that you have to die to get there. Personally chosen by Odin, half of all Asgardian warriors who die in combat travel to Valhalla upon their death, led by Valkyries, while the other half go to the goddess Freya's field. There isn't much clarity on why a warrior goes to one instead of the other, but it doesn't matter, because based on all of our debunking, Loki isn't in either of them as of right now. For more information about the afterlife in Norse mythology, you can visit your local library, or just Google it like any sane human being would do. In Valhalla, the freshly dead join previous generations of those who've died in combat, as well as various legendary Germanic heroes and kings, as they prepare to aid Odin during the events of Ragnarok. Outside the hall, you'll find the golden tree, Glacier, and the hall's ceiling is thatched with golden shields. Sounds pretty epic. The rest of the Nordic dead travel to Hell, spelled with one L, so it's not nearly as bad as the one you think it is. In fact, Hell is overseen by what they call a King of the Dead, and there's a theory out there that Loki's angling to become the King of the Dead in Hell, and that his death at the hands of Thanos is the beginning of that ascension to the throne. Now, we don't necessarily think this is the case, because we think he's still alive, but it could be interesting. In the comics, the King of the Dead is a fellow named Baldur the Brave, who's been a supporting character in Thor's comics pretty much from the beginning. We'd love to see him in the MCU sometime soon, but since there's already a billion other heroes in the movies and Endgame will mostly focus on the original six Avengers and a few supporting characters, we don't think Baldur is going to be among them. Again, we might get to Baldur the Brave in another Thor movie, even though Asgard is destroyed and everything. Now in the comics, before Baldur, the dead was ruled over by Thor's sister, Hela. You remember her, right? The girl with the crazy headpiece and the hammer-crushing telepathy? Although she's slightly different from the version we saw in the comics, in the movies, Hela's ambitions for taking lives become too much for Odin, who banished her to an unknown prison for millennia. So with Hela in Odin's prison of sorts, who's been running hell? Maybe it's Baldur. We don't know. It's the MCU, so it could literally be anybody. You maybe it's Howard the Duck. In the comics, when Hela went MIA, Baldur accepted the crown and all the powers that came along with being the king of hell. That story would make for one hell of a great sequel for Ragnarok. No pun intended, but even if that's not the plot of the fourth Thor movie, which hasn't officially been announced yet, we'd still like to see Thor actually visit Valhalla and fight alongside some old friends. Still, we have to ask, if hell is in prison, she obviously can't rule over hell, so someone else must be running the place, right? That has to be the case. According to Thanos in Infinity War, Thanos has announced that he knows a rightful king has recently entered the realm of the dead. Yes, he said king, and we're sure it's not Loki. Now, if Loki is heir to the Asgardian throne, and as he said himself, an Odin son, it stands to reason that Loki would be chosen for Valhalla if he died. Since there was no twinkly sparkles on top of everything else we've pointed out in this video, he ain't dead. But if he was, he'd be a likely pick for Valhalla by Odin himself, enjoying an endless supply of the finest venison in the Nine Realms. The thing is, to rule over Hell, to become the king of the cold, frostly, yucky Norse Hell, it's all a significant step down for Loki, and not like him at all. It seems like, in the MCU at least, Loki has worked hard to redeem himself as a hero, perhaps in a manner worthy of his adopted Asgardian heritage. He has had one of the most interesting character arcs in the entire MCU. He started off as a sketchy good guy before going fully bad, starting a Chitauri invasion, and then he sacrificed himself for his brother in the Infinity War. Obviously, he'll never be as big and strong as Thor, or any of his Asgardian warrior buddies, but a good warrior uses the weapon he has. And Loki's strongest weapons are definitely his manipulation, trickery, and deceit. While he often does use his weapons in a negative way, we've seen him use them in a positive and noble way, befitting an Asgardian hero. In the end, he was just using what he has to do what he thought was right, even though it was probably the wrong things to do on multiple occasions. Hey, it's Loki. He's always looking out for number one. Now, let's say Loki does take over hell and becomes the king of the dead. Yahoo! Loki finally gets to sit on a throne and rule over something, as he feels he was destined to do. But as his character has gone through a pretty solid arc from arch-villain to a bit of an anti-hero, so has his motivation. Instead of taking a throne of glory and opulence, like, say, the one in Asgard that used to be, Loki takes over a throne of obligation, because a ruler is needed, and his kingdom isn't that great. No one wants to be in hell, so how does one even make hell great? One might consider this step down a bit of a penance, as Loki is trying to make up for the centuries of mischief and evil he has plagued humanity and his homeland of Asgard with, thus completing the arc from bad guy to good guy. It makes 
sense, but we just can't see Hell being an important part of the MCU at this point in time, so we think Loki is still alive and kicking. This is a pretty big ball of conjecture on Loki's motivation for faking his own death, but as we said, while he may be becoming a hero, he's still overall pretty ambitious and downright selfish overall. It'll be a while before MCU fans, as well as the Avengers themselves, embrace Loki as one of their own. Only time will tell. So there's definitely reason to believe Loki's still alive and will continue to reappear for the foreseeable future. Not just to antagonize Thor and the Avengers, but to star in his already announced Disney streaming service TV series later in 2019. While we're convinced he's alive, our questions will finally be answered on April 26th, 2019 when Avengers Endgame hits theaters. This time, Disney and Marvel are releasing the movie all over the world on the same day to reduce the risk of spoilers from the places that get to see the movie first. So we'll all find out together. Isn't that beautiful? In the meantime, we can hibernate until March 8th, 2019 and look for clues once Captain Marvel finally comes to the big screen and brings with her some of the greatest but goofiest bad guys in Marvel Comics, the Skrulls. We can't wait. Now that we've debunked Loki's supposed permadeath in the MCU, what do you think about it? Do you think he's gone to Valhalla? If he even belongs there? Do you think the right-handed, left-handed stuff has any hidden meaning? Let us know in the comments section below, and don't forget to subscribe to CBR for more debunked videos. Thanks for watching.